Shalom and welcome to Sima Sef Torah. This year is entitled Rav Goron with the Nai Yisrael and Sahel, part three. Another issue that Rav Goron was involved in, tragic, tragic issue, is identifying the bodies of the fallen. And it's not just a question of respect for the mate, which ex of course is an amazing, important myth in its own right, but what about all the women, the wives? What's incredible beyond belief is that Rav Goron went ahead after 48, where a hundred Zahirim were killed by the Jordanians and the Egyptians, he went, he met with Nasser, who was a young army officer in those days, and he met with him behind enemies, enemy lines to find the graves. There was mass graves, but he needed to determine if there were any surviving Hayalim. He could not go ahead and take the bodies out of the graves from Egypt, but at least he could ascertain the numbers of the dead and does it match up with the numbers of the people missing. And can he go ahead, say, yes, they are truly dead, and free the Agunot, these wives who thought, that's it, the husbands are still alive. So in addition to the halachas of mourning for their husbands, of freeing them up so they can remarry. He was there behind enemy territory to identify the bodies as best as possible. And then, of course, he was in Kush Etzion, where the massacre occurred as well, occurred as well, even though they had white flags and they gave up. They killed them all, the Jordanians killed them all anyway. He had to go through minefields, literally minefields, to go to meet the the people in the Gush area, in the bunkers where they were explosives were thrown in and blew up there, blew them up. He had to go there and try painstakingly take day who was able to retrieve the bodies and bring them back. And all the halachas of how to identify a body and how to go in and when to declare that a chayal is gone and when the woman can be married, that was all Ragorin. The Dhaka submarine, they went under. No trace whatsoever came from Europe flying to Israel, flying, uh, sailing, okay, or in, go in Israel underseas, gone, off the radar. No one knows what's happening. The world, actually, many countries were out searching. Some were criticized. Why are you helping to search for an Israeli submarine? But be that as it may, the world was searching for it. And Rav Gore needed to paskin. It's a yam. It's a, it's a river. It's a body of water where there's no end to it. So once you have that, they could go anywhere. Halachically, that's a problem. We cannot declare the wives freely married. And he had to go through the topic, the sugya, to say when you have the whole world searching overhead, maybe now we could define this as an, a yam, a body of water that does have limits. And he worked through the sugya and the topic to go ahead and free the aguno. Years later, he was proven correct because the submarine was found submerged on the water years, years later. So the, idea, so the whole task of freeing the woman, the wives of these Hayalim who gave their life to the country, those halachot were set up in the early years of the country. And of course, at the front, forefront of this whole crucial, crucial process, of course, was Rav Gorin. And once again, tremendous hakarta to the man who set these laws in motion. Of course, we've had this for thousands of years. A, a person in Aguna doesn't know what, an unspecific case. But over here now, we had, we had in Europe, the Twin Towers. It's come up plenty of times, but now we're having the framework of an army, which, of course, the first time in 2,000 years. Shalom.